Good morning from New Hope Parish. I'm Gail Wilcox, I'm the pastor, and today my husband Paul Wilcox and I are gonna be working together. We want to wish you a happy Easter, and today we can say, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, we haven't been able to say that for a long time, and it is so good to say that freely. We wanna welcome you to this time of worship, and I want to remind you about something that's happening today in Dumont. That is the Easter Drive. If you'd like to join in, we invite you to decorate your car and then um, move about, drive about Dumont and Ardale communities and see what they have in their windows. People have been putting Easter eggs and, and bunnies, of course, and crosses and flowers. And so we invite you to do that with your decorated car, drive through, keep your windows down, safe distancing, and wave or honk your horn and just celebrate. Let's celebrate. It's a time to celebrate the resurrection. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Let's begin our time of worship now with a call to worship. We thought you were dead. We thought the cross was the end. We thought that when the stone rolled over the tomb, that was it. But this is it. The dead are living. The cross is empty. The stone is rolled away and one phrase describes it all. Alleluia, Christ is risen. We thought you had said your final word. We thought those with the power had won. We thought that when you cried out, that was it. But this is it. The word breathes. The powers are defeated. The final cry was only the beginning. And one phrase says it all. Alleluia. Alleluia. Jesus, Jesus is, is risen. risen. We thought the story was finished. We thought the hope had ended. We thought that when the tomb was sealed, that was it. But this is it. The story has just begun. The hope is newly born. The tomb is empty. And one phrase says it all. Alleluia. Jesus is risen. Amen. We want to share some special music with you now. Uh, a long time Easter celebration hymn, Christ the Lord is risen today. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb, and suddenly there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go and quickly tell his disciples, 
He has been raised from the dead. And indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee, and there you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. Thank you, Paul. And as we're making a little shift here, I want to remind you that if you'd like to invite your kids to a time of Moments for Young Disciples, Ann McWilliams has posted a children's sermon for us on YouTube. So a big shout out to Ann. Thank you so much for doing that. Today, my sermon is entitled Geode in the Garden. The journey to the empty tomb always begins with women. The women who loved and cared for Jesus. The women whom Jesus had liberated from their own tombs. Women like Mary Magdalene, out of whom Jesus had cast many demons. Women whom Jesus had freed from their culture's oppressive stereotypes. That first Easter morning, it was the women who came. Some came with embalming spices to tend the Lord's body. Some came with worry. How would we roll the stone away, they thought. Some came with concerns. How could they possibly carry on without Jesus? Some came with fears and sorrow, and some were just plain angry about his death. But they all came to the tomb expecting nothing but a corpse and knowing nothing about his resurrection yet. I thank God. I am very thankful that we have the stories of the women, what they heard and what they felt and what they saw to help me and to help us today, if only for a few minutes, to let go of what we know and currently believe about his resurrection and instead to be able to join them and imagine the sorrow and the surprise and what it was like to discover the empty tomb for the very first time. So let's begin. Tombs were carved out of rocky hillsides, and the stone that sealed Jesus's tomb was most likely an ordinary, really heavy, grayish-brown rock of some kind from that area. That morning, no one was prepared for the dazzling glory that would be revealed to the world. It was as if the stone sealing the tomb was stifling a cry of hallelujah, until it was broken open and rolled away and burst open with hallelujahs and the promise of new life, much like geodes. Now a geode is a rock. It is a special kind of rock that's formed under water, where, excuse me, that's formed with water, and water and debris get caught in the pockets of the rocks, and then over time, those pockets are transformed into diamond-like crystals that sparkle and delight. But they have to be broken open before you can see the amazing sparkle. And the change occurs in them over time. It's hidden without anyone noticing. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. Can you see that twinkling? Maybe not so much, but it is, it is a twinkling, glorious, hue, just a, a hidden beauty. And resurrection is a lot like a geode. There it is. We can kind of get it now. Do you see it sparkling? This is a really big geode given to me by a dear friend. So Matthew's gospel says the women's journey to the tomb begins quietly, but it gets noisy in a hurry. There's an earthquake so powerful that it shakes the dishes in their kitchen cupboards back home. The next thing we know is the, they see an angel clothed in a dazzling white robe. And this extraterrestrial being is strong enough somehow to roll away the huge stone and then stands atop the stone that's no longer a barrier to, but is a pulpit for proclaiming not just the good news, but the best news ever. No wonder the guards shake and fall down like dead men. The angel says what angels say, 
when they do something that knocks your socks off, they say, don't be afraid. <laughs> but the women can't help it. They're afraid. They're shocked. They're amazed. The angel continues, Jesus isn't here. He's risen from the dead, just like he said. Come and take a look into the tomb and believe and then run. Run fast and tell the disciples what you've seen and heard. Familiar story, right? Well, how about this version? What would it be like to take flowers to the cemetery, to the grave of your beloved one, only to be greeted by an angelic being perched atop of an unearthed empty casket, telling you not to be afraid because your loved one is alive? Can you imagine that? Like the women, I suspect your heart would pound, your mind would race, and your mouth would go dry. At least that's what would happen to me. And that's what it must have been like for the women that morning. The resurrection is beyond our imagination, but it is not beyond our faith and our hope. The women felt fear and excitement and joy all at once, and we can resonate with those feelings when we witness the birth of a baby. We know what that feels like. Or when you nurse someone very ill back to good health, those are those feelings that come to you. They come to you when you revel in creation. I remember standing on the edge of the rim of the Grand Canyon about five years ago when Paul and I took a trip there. I was deathly afraid to be right on the edge. I was excited and I was in awe, all of those things at once. So what I'm getting at is that we know what it's like to have our stony hearts broken open by God's dazzling power, even when we don't expect it, even when we can't understand it. And that is like what the women experienced. That first Easter morning, the women came to the tomb afraid, afraid of their government, afraid for their safety, afraid for their future. They came weeping over broken dreams. They came exhausted. They came doubting. Today, you and me, we're, we're no different. We are like those women. Today, we approach the tomb in the company of others that are viewing right now with us, our church family in isolation, but we're together in spirit. And today, we come in the company of others. All of us love Jesus. We don't bring spices or flowers. So what is it that we bring to the tomb today? What do you bring? What do I bring? Well, if I'm honest, I bring a measure of, of disbelief. It's hard to believe. We may come confessing our sins and our struggles to be able to live up to Jesus' teaching. I know I do. And if we're honest, we have to own up to the fact that we bring some fear, we bring some concern, and rightfully so. We have been living under the cloud of a pandemic, a deadly virus. And so what we bring, a piece of what we bring is grief over so many lives lost to COVID-19 and so many hearts crushed. Many here bring anxiety as we deal with the pandemic and there are those that while the pandemic is going on, they are dealing with cancer or a broken relationship or financial insecurity, trouble on top of trouble. Like the women on that first Easter morning, do we approach the tomb expecting to find only a corpse, a mere shadow of our hopes and dreams? Well, each scriptural account tells us how the good news exceeded those expectations. The Gospel of Mark says, the women found the stone rolled away and a young man dressed in white greeted them with news of the resurrection. Luke says the woman entered and then opened the tomb, uh, entered the open tomb, excuse me, and met two men in brilliant clothes who terrified them, that's terrifying in a good way, with the good news. John's Gospel is maybe my most favorite telling how Mary Magdalene went alone to the tomb and found the stone rolled away. And she stood just inches away from the good news of the empty tomb. 
but she didn't dare to get close. She didn't want to risk looking in. We know that feeling a bit, don't we? Afraid of what we might find in our own tombs? And then after returning, Mary Magdalene brings Peter and John to the tomb, and then she comes back, and finally, cautiously, skeptically, she peers into the tomb, and she's amazed. The angels are glowing, and they're bathed in light. And she turns, and just then she doesn't even recognize that the man standing near her in the garden is not the gardener. She doesn't recognize her Lord until he speaks her name, and then in an instant her whole world has changed. And so by the time she leaves the garden, her worries and fears have been transformed into relief and breathtaking joy. She came sorrowing, but she leaves rejoicing. We too come to the cross, to the tomb sorrowing, but how will we leave? What will we take away from this celebration of the resurrection this year, this very strange, unusual year? What difference will Easter make for us, especially during this year of pandemic? How will you and I be changed by the story of the resurrection? Well, if Easter means anything, it means that the God who appeared to be silent on Good Friday has the last word today on Easter Sunday. And the word is not death. The word is life, abundant life now and later. It means that God said yes to Jesus and no to the powers that executed him. It means that if Jesus is Lord, then the powers of this world, even our world, they are not our Lord's. It means that Jesus lives not just as a figure of the past, but as our daily companion in this present time and into the future. There's a wonderful story about a minister who was traveling in Italy, and there he saw the grave of a man. I think he was visiting a graveyard. He saw the grave of a man who had died centuries before, who was an unbeliever and completely opposed to Christianity. But he was a little afraid of the story of the resurrection too. So before he died, he ordered that after he died, a huge stone slab should be put over his grave so that he would not have to be raised from the dead in case there was a re resurrection from the dead. And the story goes that he had insignias put all over the slab saying things like, I do not want to be raised from the dead. I don't believe in it. But when he was buried, an acorn truly must have fallen into the grave. And about a hundred years later, the acorn had grown up through the grave, split open that slab, and it actually grew into a gorgeous tree that stood dazzling in the sunlight. That visiting minister who saw this looked at Ed and he said to himself, if an acorn, which has power of biological life in it, can split open a slab of stone, a slab of that magnitude, think of what the seed of God's resurrection power, the dazzling power, can do in a person's life. And I want to say, indeed, once again this Easter, the women have gone before us to the tomb. They've paved the way. And the good news of Christ's resurrection today, it's God's breaking open our stony hearts our geodes, and revealing a dazzling hope of new life now and later, even during a pandemic, and maybe especially during this pandemic. We can shout with hope and with joy, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Would you join me in an Easter prayer as we close? Let us pray. Dazzling God, we repeat our Easter shouts of surprise and joy again and again for news of your victory over the powers of death and evil is news so startling, so amazing, and so different from the news that bombards us day by day that we are awed 
We are dazzled by the good news, especially in this time of global pandemic. Thank you for surprising us again and again with resurrection life that brings hope and joy to our hearts. You and your risen power are shaping all our days. And so we praise you, merciful and mighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ risen this day on this holy day of Easter. Go with us. May the power of God underscore and enliven our love for each other. And may the Holy Spirit connect us, even in this time of isolation, connect us one with another. Even as we don't leave the doors of our homes to go in peace, may we stay home in that Easter peace. God bless you and have a wonderful Easter. Amen. Amen. Happy Easter. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Amen.